Hello, welcome back. You have unpacked your standard or standards, and now you're ready to get into the big work of creating a progression. And so we use all of these terms in education, and today I want to teach you what is a progression. Before we even dig into how to develop one, like, what is it? So let's take just a moment and talk about what is a progression. That. Yeah, there we go. So when I think about a progression, I think about a progression being um, something that allows us to locate. It's a series of steps, something that allows us to locate where we are and what the next steps are towards mastery. So it allows us as teachers and students to say, I'm here and here is my next step that I need in order to be able to get towards mastery at the end. And I wanna share with you this analogy for just a moment. I want you to think about if you are trying to cross a river and your goal is to get to the other side of a river, think about a progression of stones. So you're going to take this step and then this step and then this step, and then you've hit that goal of crossing the river. So it's a series of small steps that get you to the next, to your destination. So your goal could be mastery of the standard or mastery of a set of skills. Um, we create progressions on lots of different things. Currently, what we're pro creating progressions on are priority standards. It's going to be the series of steps that we need to achieve mastery. It gives us a clear path. So I was thinking about how I was teaching my sons about doing laundry. And this was something that I had set what mastery looked like when it came to doing laundry in our house. And this is just, um, this is just a little bit of chicken scratches for me, but the steps of helping my my boys, my children, learn how to do laundry and what mastery looked like for me. And so you probably do this in your life all the time if you have children or what mastery looks like to you. And we create a, a progression of those steps toward learning to get toward mastery. So here's what I was thinking. They were doing laundry and a one was sorting your clothes instead of like throwing all of the clothes and with all of your dirty towels and all of your sheets in the laundry, like sort it and throw it in the washer, add some detergent um, with those clothes or with your laundry, turn it on. And when it's done, throw it all in the dryer. Like that is a step. That's like one place that we're going to start. It's a start. The laundry gets washed in the washer and dried in the dryer. It's a good day when you have a house full of men, right? Or sorry, guys, I didn't mean that, but I kind of did in my house. I just know from experience. Next step. Let's do something really wild and crazy and sort the, the clothes based on color. So maybe we could have darks, kind of lights, and some whites, three whole piles, just based on color, nothing else. Throw them in the washer, throw those one load in the washer, one set of one pile in the washer and add detergent in the proper place. There's the little place um, up at the top, not just pour it inside the washer. So let's move from pouring it inside the washer to the little place where you're supposed to put it. Okay. And then choose a setting. Everything's not cotton or maybe everything's not bulky. So knowing to choose a setting instead of just push power and on start and whatever setting it's on, it's on. Then throw the clothes, throw the laundry in the dryer and actually choose a setting there, not just kind of haphazardly. 
that's a two. So that's an easy, if, if my sons are here, I can show them one or two tips that they can do to move to here, right? Do you see how I just did that? Now, this is what mastery looks like to me. So based on the standard that I have of doing laundry, sort clothes based on color and fabric. So I don't really like blue jeans and my nice um, shirts that are like a thinner fabric to be washed together, or maybe my darker sweaters to be washed with my sweatshirts and my jeans. So start thinking about how can we sort based on color and then fabric type. So see that? Then we're going to throw that pile of laundry in the washer, place the detergent on the, in the proper place, and now determine the proper setting. So here we might be doing just cotton and we might be doing um, like a linen, maybe not linen, but the, the next lower setting. And then here we might be doing actual like a gentle wash. Okay, so there's several settings, bulky, cotton, gentle wash, linen, there's like all of these settings. So now start to get more specific in the setting type. Then when it's washed, some of the clothes go in the dryer, not all of them. Some need to be laid out flat to dry, right? You know what I'm talking about. And some can be hung to dry out. And so do you see how I just did that? How I just created those steps to be able to reach the goal of not crossing the river, but doing the laundry? That's what we're going to be doing with our standards. We're going to be breaking it down in very clear, concise steps that get toward mastery. Here's what I want to say about progressions that get tricky. Toward mastery of the standard. And when we do that, we have to remember the work, especially thinking about those higher level skills that our students will be doing to master the standard. We have to think about what the standard's telling us not what our students are currently doing. And that is a predictable problem that we run into in education. I need us right now to take the student part out of it and what we think our kids can do and think about what did we learn when we were unpacking the standard. Off you go.